Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Lift Effect podcast. I am your host, Matt McNeil, founder, clinical director, and director of human performance at Lift Effect, where we assist professional pilots with maintaining better mental health and optimizing their mental skills. The goal of this podcast is simple, to help pilots and other high liability professionals and disciplines come out of the shadows to discover how we can live better lives personally and professionally. Join us each episode as we discuss various topics ranging from mental health, mental skills and performance, to business, entrepreneurship, and a few other surprises along the way. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Lift Effect Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Keller, and the planning god himself, Matt McNeil. Oh, God. God. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, a load the, of crap. The, 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 comment of that, the reason for that comment will become yeah. clear soon, but <laughs> he, is, he is truly a planning, organized... If, if, you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to the last... Uh, episode where he talks about how he writes down everything he eats you'll understand how this man is a planning <laughs> it's, fool <laughs> it's absurd i'm absurd i tell myself i'm absurd i look at myself in the mirror and i'm like dude you're absurd uh because i am it's the reason i haven't cut my hair in a long time i have to laugh i laugh every time i look in the mirror it's like dude you're absurd uh, because we're all absurd but I, okay i whatever what so what are we talking about <laughs> well you know it, the, 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 that that uh, intro comment kind of um ties into uh, a couple people that have asked questions mm -hmm. regarding your productivity planner mm -hmm. and uh, how you use it when do you use it um what uh, uh, what uh, who did you get it from as far as uh, mm -hmm. can you talk about the your prob because i know you've talked about it to, to me quite a bit yeah. and how you religiously use it yep. so there's been enough questions about it. i figured today would be a day we talk about yeah. planning and and what it does for you and how psychologically you use it. yeah let's go from a psychological perspective since this is kind of a psychological show i use so i don't remember how i got started on the productivity planner i have i don't recall where i picked it up um I'm, i heard about it somewhere i and and tried it and i loved it based on what i like about it is it's really based on kind of the neuroscience of how we uh how we how much channel capacity we have meaning how many things we can hold in our, our short-term, long-term memory, and how do we execute on that to be able to uh, be, you know, be productive. So I like the Productivity Planner. I've used it for years. And the Productivity Planner is part of how I organize myself. I have my email is structured in a certain way with, with buckets and how I go through it quickly. And then my Evernote, which is like my second, some people call it your second brain. Some people use things like Asana or Notion or whatever. I just use Evernote because I've used it for years. Um, there's categories of things in there. And then there's my productivity planner. So this is, the productivity planner is a notebook. It's a, it's a, it's a physical pen and paper book that, um, whereas those other things are digital. A email obviously is digital and Evernote is digital. So I use a book. I, I there's a filtering system, but the sh long story short, short story long, what I decide is to work on each day will go into my productivity planner. It's pen and paper. I like it because I just like there's something about writing with ink on paper. I also like it because I can take notes in there in the margins. I can keep track of time if you want to use a Pomodoro technique, which is a whole nother thing. When when do yeah. you do it? Do you do it the morning of as things yeah. come along, the dent night before? When do you I try how to do you, how do you do it? Yeah, key there's a crucial piece here. Uh, and 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 there's a there's a reason which I'll get into, but I do this the day before. And that's because so I, I planned today was planned yesterday, and I try to have it done by three PM. The day before so i know what i'm going to be working on the next day um by 3 p.m and the reason is because if i get up in the morning today and i'm trying to decide what is the, my important task and the productivity planner has one most important two secondary and 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 then two additional so there's like five total tasks 
if I is that be is be, is that because of that particular productivity planner, or is that kind of a general? Um, this you know, particular I, productivity planner, and again, it's this is based on research and science. There's five tasks for each day, and that's because the research shows that that's about all we can do. <laughs> really, I mean, there's a there is a you probably have a hundred things that you can get done. But, and I do more than five tasks in a day, clearly, but the five most important or th mo most important, two secondary, two additional, if I, if I can just get the one done, that's a huge success. That's a huge success. And that leads to geometric growth. It's like, if you do a little, a lot, don't do a lot, a little. So, but the reason I do it the day before is because if I get up that morning and I'm like, okay, what do I got to do? That takes bandwidth. Think about all the time it takes, and for, not the gender norm here, but like, you know, women typically take more time getting ready than dudes, and maybe that's better, maybe they're smarter for that, but like, if you think about how much time is spent getting ready for the day, like choosing your, your what you're going to wear, and then getting it, and then doing, you know, like putting on makeup, and prepare, it, it's it's like insane. I mean, it's crazy. And some guys are the same way too. That's fine. That's 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 great. I wear this typically wear the same shit every day because I don't. I have so much stuff on my plate that getting up and be like, well, what pants should I wear? What should I wear? Long pants today? Is it warm out? Is it cold? Should I wear black pants or gray? Like or what? Well, if I wear these pants, do I need a belt? And then what kind of shirt should I wear? Like. I just, I have like 10 pairs of the same pants. I just get them. I put them on because I don't have to think about that because that you takes subscribe to the Johnny Cash yeah. method. All well, in black. <laughs> all in black. I mean, it, yeah, it's Johnny Cash. Uh, is actually, do I wear black today or do I wear black? Johnny Cash is one of my heroes, actually. You know, I mean, and so I, that's a big, big influence on me is Johnny Cash. And, you know, he wore all black and and he wore the same thing. And, and lots of people do this. I'm not, certainly not, you know, unique in this but when you're really 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 busy trying to make decisions about stupid stuff it just kills you it it, it destroys your productivity so if i'm going what am i going to work on today i'm going to lose probably an hour trying to figure that out or half an hour so i like to get up i know exactly what i'm going to do i know what my priority is so but one of the things that really influenced me to plan what I'm going to do for the next day today was a guy named Jason Selk uh, and a guy named Tom Bartow. Jason Selk is a, a well-known mental skills coach. He's a psychologist. I think he's a clinical psychologist, uh, therapist like me, and he's also a mental skills coach like me. He coached the St. Louis Cardinals baseball team. Um, was the mental skills coach for a number of years, and then he coaches executives, and he does a lot of the same stuff that I've done. I was, you know, came from the aviation, he came from the sports world. Um, but I love Jason Selk. I think he's brilliant, and he wrote a book called um, "Organized Tomorrow Today," that came out in 2015, and it really he kind of looked at the science of why is this optimal? Why is this better to do? We, we kind of all knew it was, but he didn't, the research was sort of all over and he was able to synthesize, synthesize a lot of the research about what's the importance of that. And he wrote a book called Organize Tomorrow Today. And if you want, I can pull up some notes and we can talk about that book. So maybe people sure. don't have to go read it. While you pull it up, I, I just was going to ask you a couple other questions real quick about the productivity planner itself. The one you use. Yep. How long have you been using that particular one or have you migrated through a number of them to get to that one? I've I had versions kind of like weak versions of this, but when I discovered this, it's made by a, a company called Intelligent Change. When I discovered this, I never turned back. And this was how long have you had it? Oh, um, I think 2016. So you've had it for quite a while now. Yeah, seven plus years. Yeah, I have a shelf. I mean, when I fill them up, I go through three a year. And uh, I mean, I got a bookshelf full of them. And I like having a physical record too of things where I can go back and look at notes I've made in the margins and just kind of be able to track what I've done. So I've used it for a long time and I'll, I'll keep using it. And some people say, well, why don't you use a digital version of it or just create a digital? Because pen to paper makes a difference. And being able to jot down notes and it, there's something that just happens cognitively 
when you when you're writing versus typing typing the problem with typing is you can type faster than your brain can actually come up with stuff but when you write it meters back your cognition and so it forces i think it forces you that's why i journal i don't type a journal i write a journal and i and clients that work with me i make them write not type and they're like oh my god it's totally cha- yeah you're right it totally is different or morning pages or those kinds of things writing slows you down and it mm-hmm. slows you down so you're a little more intentional with instead of typing you can just i mean you can type 120 words and then you a can minute. change it so much easier you can change when it right yeah yeah and so i like to draw pictures i like to circle things and make arrows and connect things kind of mind mapping so that's why i like to to write it in a book so yeah. let's let's talk about this did you have anything else you want to add here or? no i was gonna okay. say really quick well just to finish up you can there are all kinds of productivity planners uh, the particular one and and because i went and purchased it myself yep. um uh, and i'm i'm trying to be more uh, um, um focused on using it i'm i'm not as good as as mad as yet with it but you can get it from amazon that particular one and yep. the one i got was a three-month productivity planner so it'd be you can get year ones you uh six-month ones this one's three months and it's about 30 bucks so yep. it's called intelligent change three months Pro- productivity planner um if that's something you want that's specific to what matt does but there are so many different kinds yeah. and they all are very similar um the year ones can be you can get them small like a almost like a like a size of a book or you can get them the size of a eight and a half by 11 so yeah whatever works best for you the key is to start to get one and start using yeah, it we'll we'll and, link to it in the show yeah. notes we'll put a link to it and there's different but, um, versions that they come up with i recommend you buy the bounded v- one first because yeah. Actually, in the beginning, there's there's written oh, there's explanation, quite a bit of information, which quite is a bit good to read. I was read. really surprised. Yeah, yeah. I was I was very surprised how much I was going like, boy, that's a lot of the book. Yeah, I wish they had one that's like that, and then another one's just got just the meat. Well, they <laughs> do because um, uh, this one had the meat and potatoes. Well, and here's here's one I'm going to switch to when I fill the one that I'm done. Uh, when that one is filled, I'm going to now switch to sheets. It's called Productivity Planner Sheets. And that's it's still like by a, intelligent change. Yes, same company, intelligent change. Yep, and it's it's a reporter style uh, notebook now where it's just the sheets. I'll have to look at. I haven't seen that one. Of yeah, the one I have is the hardbound, like the one yeah. you have. I like the hardbounds. I've used them for years, but I'm they're gonna, a little bit more durable. They yeah. they stand up to. They do carry them around. That right. one there is a. It's this got is a just of top. Yeah, I'm gonna you know, and it'll. I won't rip the sheets out, but it, we'll see how it holds up. But I'm gonna switch to that just because I don't need all the extra stuff that it comes with so but okay let's talk about this this book organized tomorrow today by jason selk um and what this book does is it really shows you how to embrace channel capacity instead of fighting against it which i've talked about channel capacity in the past it's how many things you know we can't multitask we can we can switch tasks but we can really only uh you know hold a few things at a time so it's really important where you put the spotlight of your attention if you want to be effective and you want to be productive. So you're, this book teaches you how to make decisions, how to establish priorities, um, and, and light your own motivating fire instead of continuing to chase the, the, the counterintuitive idea of the concept of multitasking. And now most people still believe, and I see this with clients, is like being busy is the equivalent of being important. I hate the word busyness and I I use it too much, which means I'm not really organizing my time very well. But busyness is crap is crap. It's terrible. Busyness is is just it doesn't mean that you're important. And there's this idea that highly successful people, you know, are busy. But I would say highly successful people have learned that being busy is a complete, colossal, utter waste of time. Being productive is the goal. So you know, knowing something doesn't change your life. Doing something does. Reading this book is one thing, but there's a big difference between getting information and then actually understanding it. And there's even a wider gap between understanding it and then implementing it. We, oh, yeah. Theory to practice to mastery, which is what we do in V1. So it takes it takes time. And this is why the, I think the, in this book, there's this emphasis to try to avoid... Um, mastering all eight concepts that they present in this book. What Jason says is just just master one. 
Start with just one. We preach this in V1. I give every week I come up with, I have 10 to 12 things of like getting at, here's something you can try, but don't try to do all, just choose one. Just do one. If you try to take it all on, you're going to fail. Success comes from one dedicated and focused step at a time. So that's that's my word of warning. Now, I don't I don't want you to go buy this book. I'll I'll summarize it for you. So, the two most important questions for tomorrow, Jason talks about in this book is so he says and there's a quote, to set yourself on the right track, ask yourself these two critical questions. One, what are the three most important things I need to get done tomorrow? And two, what is the single most important task I must get done? So, again, productivity planner, right? They got one most, two secondary. That's what Jason's saying right here. The question, now the questions work. Let me, okay, let me keep reading the quote here because it's not done. He says, the questions work within your brain's channel capacity to give you direction and, prior, and prioritization in manageable doses. When you start your day, you know the three most important things you need to get done by the end of the day, and you know which of those three things is the big glow-in-the-dark priority. You'd be amazed at how much clearer your decision-making becomes and how much more efficiently you'll use your time just by taking the simple organizational step. End quote. It's a really powerful quote. So those are your... those are your two most important questions. What are the three most important things to get done tomorrow? And what's the one must? The glow he likes calls the glow in the dark, which I think is a great <laughs> image, it's like a neon sign, right? Hugely important thing that will most powerfully move you forward. Remember 8020? Remember mm. Pareto's principle? There's something that, that what are the two inputs that gives you 80% of the output? So if you just implement this this one thing. I will tell you, (laughs) this will change your life. (laughs) It may change your life. The simple thing. What are the three most, the one must. If you do that for a week, you will be more productive than you've probably been in a year. I'm not kidding. What what it will show if you're able to do that for one week, you'll understand why so much of what we do is really busy work yeah you're busy but it's not work and it's not productive like he said right um here you'll be able to look back and you'll actually have tangible results of of what you set out to do and what you did do right that's right so jason talks about in um he, he talks about the fact that that super successful people they're not they're not trying to be busy they're just trying to be productive And so you can't be truly productive unless you've slowed down writing, slowed down unless to to, to be able to figure out what actually needs to get done. You got to, you got to throttle back and then you've got to discipline yourself to, to get it done. And so let's organize your, your, your tomorrow today. So three most, so here's what I encourage Let's just, here's what I want everyone listening to this to do just today. Don't go out and get the productivity plan. You don't have to go do that. If you want to, you can. But write down on a napkin. I don't care wh- wherever. On your hand. What is the three most important things that you need to get done tomorrow? Three most. And it doesn't have to be significant. Like some hugely like my taxes. It could be like go to the store and buy vegetables. Fresh vegetables. It could be put gas in the car. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. They, in fact, I think the more benign is probably the more impactful. And you actually made a, I think, a, a indirectly a really key point. When you say, don't do, don't make it do your taxes unless you have very simple things to do. But it can be a portion of that. Organ, you know, accumulate all the documentation. You know, yeah. do it. Break out. Yeah, uh, how many? You know, look at three or four steps to doing your taxes. So you, because otherwise you're going to go. Well, I've, it was my must do, and I didn't get it done. Yeah. Well, some things you can't get done in a day, but you can do portions of it yes. by breaking it down into individual components. So, right. on something that's a larger task, just take a piece of it and go. What portion of that? What can are the I steps? Do? What yep. are the steps? The chunking it down. Yep. I, I agree. So you write down your three most, and then your one must. 
So like, imagine what life would be like five years from now if you took a few minutes to establish these priorities every day and then you nailed it 80% of the time. Just like take a moment and think about that for a second. What would your life be like if you did that every day and you nailed it 80% of the time? As now, my daughter would say, OMG. Right. <laughs> but now imagine, yeah. so let's reverse this now. Now imagine five years if you don't take that time to establish these priorities. What's it going to look like? It's probably going to look like what it looks like now. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to be a jerk or here. Or but it's going to be worse. Because yeah. people come, hey, I don't care who you are, people are not organized. They're not productive. What gets uh, scheduled gets done. What does not get scheduled gets done by chance or luck. So you've got to you've got to be able to write this down. Now there's something called the Zygernick effect. I've mentioned it before in previous podcasts, and Jason gets into this. He talks about this. He says here, "quote When you go to the effort to make a prioritized list of what you need to do the next day, you're essentially opening up a loop in your mind. As you sleep." your brain will automatically start to prepare for the successful closing of those loops. It's known as the Zygernick effect. In the 1920s, Russian psychology researcher Bluma Zygernick quantified the phenomenon after her professor, Kurt Lewin, noticed that waiters who hadn't been paid for an order had much more recall of the details of those orders than they did for orders that had already been paid. So working with from Zygernick's research, Lewin came up with the concept of task specific tension, which persists in both the conscious and subconscious mind until the task is completed. So, in other words, the mind doesn't like unfinished business. High level mathematicians and successful writers have been using this technique for years as tools for pushing their work forward. So, before going to bed, a lot of them will take a, just a few minutes to read over the mathematical or lit or uh, you know literary work that they did during that day, especially if they've reached like a plateau or they feel kind of stuck. The mind then works all night to close the loop and they wake up in the morning with this sort of sudden f flash of inspiration. And it seems magical, but it, it, it isn't. It's not magical. It's just the result of the effective priming of the, the mental pump. A couple things to note. First, we can model mathematicians and writers to use this little, you know, keep your mind working on a problem hack for our benefit by getting clarity on what we want to do tomorrow and having our brains help that, you know, help that cause, facilitate that while we'll sleep. Pretty cool. Second, be aware of, of how this can work against us if we go through the day with a ton of things unfinished, not closing the loops. It's like a bunch of unfinished checklists. Just like that waiter who remembers the orders that have been paid, you remember all the little things that you didn't quite complete. So in that context, that's not a good thing. It's, it's one of the consequences of shallow work. There's a book called Deep Work at Cal Newport. We should talk about that. Uh, and skipping from almost, you know, almost complete thing to almost complete thing. It's like all these open loops. The attention residue that we pick up diminishes our performance on the next task, which is what Jason really is, is, is pushing on this. So, which is why, why we want to finish things. Stay strong, stay strong, finish this, and then repeat. That's what you get when you have a productivity planner. You're like, okay, I finished this task. I don't move on to the secondary task. When I finish it, I check it off. Now I repeat, secondary, finish it, repeat. Secondary, then I finish it, do, re do additional tasks. You've got to be able to close the loop. It does amazing things for your brain. Here's a question for you. You, you do that the day before. You got your, uh, you, you've, you've listed out your items. And you, the next day when you're performing them, one doesn't get done. Do you at three o'clock, is that when you reassess and go, this yep. one was on my must or, you know, I may need to. Yes. And then does it roll forward or do you make a decision to hold on to it? Yeah, how do you do that for the unfinished things? Sometimes what was important yesterday, because of as how things have developed, isn't no longer important today. So 
it's fluid. It's it's not like it, it's constantly shifting and moving. At least in my schedule, with I've got a ton of stuff I got to do. <laughs> oh no, boy, right? is it ever! It's like sometimes <laughs> what was important it 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 drops in priority because something else superseded or took care of it, or it just went away. So I think you can always migrate things that don't get done. You can migrate it to the top of the list. You can maybe it, it takes a back seat. Maybe it's someday. Maybe. Maybe it's just there for reference. It no longer needs to be done. So I think being really fluid with this is a good, a, a good way to approach it. It's not like, oh, I didn't get it done. It's got to be on next. Maybe it's just not that important anymore because circumstances have changed. It's, OBE. Yeah. 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 So you got to come up with some kind of catchphrase of like, did you get it done? Like some people say, I nailed it, crushed it, whatever. Um, it's it just a shorthand, a catchphrase for when, when you fully integrated the improvement and the changes it requires. It, it, you know, it means like I would say for like ninety days, you've hit ninety percent or better. Then you can say, "Yeah, I'm starting to, I'm starting to crush this." Everything you said, it, the hardest part is, I think, for those that haven't done it, is is to start it and then make it a happen pattern. Because if you don't um you'll start it you'll stop it and and unfortunately i have to say that i've fallen victim to that it's just, it, you've got to make it like it's got to i can't say almost religious but you've got to make it where you religiously consistently do it because then it becomes a habit it's like it's like buckling your seatbelt the first time you do it it's kind of awkward and you keep and you may forget and i remember when i when way back when it when it was first started in the 70s when in the 80s when i was a little when, when most of your a lot of our viewers weren't even born. <laughs> weren't even born. You know, it wasn't it wasn't mandatory. And then when yeah. it became mandatory, you know, just getting in that habit took a while. Now I just do it and don't even think about it. Yeah. And that's where you need to get with this because it will help you organize the the big muscle movements in your life and sometimes even the small ones. Yeah. Um so that's that's important. I agree. Totally agree with that. Let me just there's a there's so much to this book. I could probably do a two parter on this, but there's a concept I want to just touch on here. It's called fight throughs, and this is the key to what they believe. And I think the research shows it. How do you install a good habit? So here's a quote. He says, "This is the point where I can do this." Turns into this is harder than I thought, or is it really going to matter if I miss a day to make it through to the third phase when the habit becomes second nature? You need to be able to win two or three of these important fight through battles with your, your uh, with yourself. End quote. So fight through. So what what he's describing here is how do you create a habit? And there's three phases that they talk about. There's the honeymoon, then there's the fight through, then there's the second nature. So basically, it starts fun, right? Oh, this is great. Exercise program, diet, whatever. Then it's, or using a productivity planner, right? Oh, this is great. This is cool. It's new. Then it gets hard. Then it gets easy. Too many go, people go through the honeymoon phase of habit creation when it's, when it's all sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. And then the moment it gets hard, they don't fight through it. And of course, their habit installation falls on its face. So we need to recognize the natural process of installing a habit and discipline ourselves to win the fight throughs. And they give four tips on this. So I'll cover these real quick. One, ritualize. Make it easy to repeat your behavior. Scientists say uh, reduce the variability of your behavior if you want to use your, your willpower wisely to install a habit. Um, so you got to ritualize it. Second, recognize. Simply knowing that you will inev inevitably encounter this little little whiny voice that's trying to negotiate with you that oh don't worry about it today just skip today you know just it's it's okay it's okay if you cheat a little bit you'll get back on it tomorrow uh that's a huge part of the process of winning fight throughs is to know that little voice is going to come up so quit being surprised that it's happening recognize a fight through when it's when you see it and then just stomp on it crush it three ask two questions so you got to be able to coach yourself one is, how will I feel if I win this fight through? And two is, how will I feel if I lose this fight through? And then fourth, uh, life they talk about life projection. Take 30 seconds. Imagine your life in five years if you consistently win your fight throughs. 
and install whatever new behaviors you're fired up about and see it, feel it, embody it, get all those sort of neuro-linguistic you know, processes happening. So you kind of change your, 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 your wiring. You got to embody it and get fired up about, about who you will become and what you will feel like, what you will look like. So that's it. So ritualize, got to ritualize it, recognize it's got the, the, the resistance is coming. Ask those two questions. How will I feel if I win this fight through? How am I going to feel if I give into it? And then project yourself into your future. Imagine what life will be like. Five, forget five years, take five days from now if you do this. And then there's more to it, but that's a quick little summary on, I w- on I that. I would make a bet book. when it, the, you know, before the fight through, it's hard because you're going, it's, it's easy to stop. I would make a bet for you, since you're on the other side of that equation, when you don't do it, you feel really kind of weird. Oh, you know, it's, 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 yeah. something's nagging going, what, you know, it's like, ah, I need to be doing this because it's, it provides you with your, your, your uh, framework and skeleton for the next day. Well, imagine if next you, day. not to be crude, but imagine if you didn't wipe your butt, how you'd feel. That's a habit, by the way. Or if yep. you didn't put your shoes on and you just walked outside, it would feel weird. That's what a good habit does. It feels like you're like, dude, no, I got to do this. I want to do this. It's not, it takes no effort at all to do that. Well, I was going to ask what to, to leave the audience with. Wiping their butt is a good habit. <laughs> I think we'll leave it at that one. Exercise is good habit. Yeah, there's a visual for everyone. You know, uh, how you equate those two? Good, good thing. Here you go. <laughs> so I aim to please. <laughs> yeah, please aim. Please yeah, aim. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, as always, we uh, ask that you give us a thumbs up, give us a good review, um, hit the like button, tell your friends. If you have a question, comment about wiping your butt, who knows? Uh, no, not that. <laughs> Please, I don't want to know about that. <laughs> it's podcast at lifteffect.com. We look forward to seeing you on our next uh, podcast. Until then, we hope you have a great day, and thanks for listening. Adios. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Lift Effect Podcast. If you want to dive deeper into this episode and every episode, go to our website, lifteffect.com forward slash podcast. If you're enjoying the show, we would love it if you'd follow us on Spotify and rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate your support. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, all with the ID Matthew McNeil. This show is brought to you by Lift Effect a clinical mental health and consulting company that assists air carriers, corporate flight departments, pilot unions, and commercial pilots by providing comprehensive psychotherapy and mental skills coaching services to pilots with mental health and mental performance related issues. Visit lifteffect.com, that's L-I-F-T-A-F-F-E-C-T.com to book your free consultation. And finally, this podcast is for general informational purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of counseling, psychotherapy, medicine, or any other healthcare service, including the giving of medical advice. No therapeutic or provider-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and any materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional psychological advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining advice for any psychological or medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the Lift Effect Podcast.